Welcome back to the Torque Test channel, and let me introduce you to the new Hilti Neuron line. This is their new SIW 6-22 mid-torque impact wrench that we have thanks to our friend Dave over at Mancaver Tools. In fact, all the Neuron bits and bobs you'll see today are thanks to MCT, who kindly agreed to loan them to us under the condition Hilti was never told that he was doing so. And in fact, even he doesn't know the results from today's Ugga Duggas, so he's finding out right along with you right now. You could say we're a bit persnickety about the details when it comes to pre-market brand samples because we don't usually deal with brands. So just keep in mind, we'll likely need to confirm these results from today when these tools go on sale, like we have since the HPT mid-torque came out. Back to the action of this new mid-size 7.2 inch long impact set to be priced at $284 is noticeably longer than the shortest mid-torque half inch impact on the market, the six inch Milwaukee 2962, but still well within the wheelhouse of modern brushless mid-torques like the 7-inch DeWalt or equally long 7.2-inch latest Ryobi P262. Since the Ryobi is the same length and powerful in our experience, we're going to be grouping it in with the testing today. Along with Hilti's predecessor too, the SIW22T-A, which is also made in China and also 22 volt, but can't be used with the same new 22 volt Neuron battery platform. Can't say we're all too stoked about that, having just purchased Hilti's battery line and chargers. The old model, which while being much bigger, is rated for the same 332 foot-pounds as this new smaller one. But also going away are the smooth lines and contours Hilti cordless have been known for. Being the last few brands that haven't gone full Power Ranger mode with Space Age action figure designs. Well, the new Neural line is certainly edgier now, and with this battery, well, it sticks off the tool like a misplaced Tetris block. I think you'll have to agree. The four amp hour pack is a 21700 cell design and uses one more cell than the equivalent M18 pack, but it appears in Hilti's well-warranted obsession with durability, they packed each cell within its own housing for heat and impact protection, then that whole structure in another nylon exoskeleton with bumpers. Battery tech and communication seem to be a lot of what Neuron is about. Battery status and health display, contact and wiring quality, uploading data about the battery tool and usage history to the cloud when charging for job site equipment management, probably for larger companies, certainly tailored for that corporation level of management. But the average Joe using this tool, this adds up to make for a stable yet pretty chunky package to be wielding around all day. There are larger tools to help Hide that chunkiness though, enter Hilti's new high torque, the SIW8-22. Unlike their mid torque, which was larger than most of the competition, this is tied for the shortest high torque cordless we've ever tested at 8.1 inches long. Even the Milwaukee is shorter than most and that comes out to 8.4 inches. With that Milwaukee's extra length, you do get numbers though like 1000 and 1400. Whereas the $334 Hilti is rocking a comparatively modest 738. Their numbers have historically been pretty honest though, so we'll have to see. Whether it's bare tool alone or with the battery, the Hilti High Torque does come in just half a pound lighter as well than that Milwaukee since that battery packs extra size is mainly due to plastic bits. But even on top of this half inch High Torque, still looking quite large and out of place with that battery. And if you think that's the case already, let me introduce you to the 8 amp hour battery pack. Here's a high output M18 pack, which is the same footprint between their 6 and 8 amp hour models. And here's Hilti Neuron's 8 amp hour. Very shipping container-esque, I feel. Can't imagine using this on a smaller tool like a drill. It's probably made to pair with their larger equipment. But nevertheless, we want to see what kind of beans these tools are bring versus modern competition. That's why we're all gathered here today. Up first, our forward working torque five second test. Here's the Milwaukee Ryobi and old Hilti 22T model. The Ryobi able to match the Milwaukee here while the previous gen Hilti racks up 273. Now here's the smaller, shorter, less heavy Neuron model. Two hundred and seventy four in line with that old model rated for the same torque makes some sense, but also you'd sort of be hoping for more from a 
2022 model. Now let's jump into some high torque five second action. Let's employ another Ryobi here as well. They're high torque since that's also in the smaller than average high torque range like this 8-22. Here's that Ryobi versus Milwaukee high torque. So quite some difference there already shown on screen. Let's see where the new Hilti High Torque falls then. We've been curious since learning about Neuron if there are any real tangible performance upgrades for the actual user with all these new edgy looks and battery incompatibility. Is this all a sales pitch to procurement and accounting departments of construction companies or can their new line actually up the ante enough to show up on the radar of brands like DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Makita for once and make them sweat a little, you know? It remains to be seen, so Let's see that. One thing we noticed on both the guns is this trigger squeeze. It's rather light and travels quite a bit before operating. You get used to it though. Five hundred and sixty from a smaller tool. Okay, that's certainly a start. The Ryobi's living in a different area code, so for our next test, we're going to have to bring some bigger guns. Back to the mid torques and jumping into our max reverse torque 10 second test. Let's see if the 6-22 can make up any ground. Here's the Ryobi, Milwaukee, and old generation Hilti on screen again. Three eighty five, three seventy, and 337. Alright, let's see where the new Neuron fits in. Three eighty two knocking on the door of the Milwaukee. Obviously, a lot of area under the curve in favor of the Milwaukee here, but still outpacing the Ryobi, which means this model certainly likes reverse more than it does forward, something we appreciate. Not bad, not bad at all. Now, let's see the high torques. We're going to recruit the help of the Rigid Octane High Torque, which is the most powerful half inch impact sold in a retail setting by our accounting, at least while you still can buy it. Here's that versus the Milwaukee 2767. Ultimately 10 foot pounds up, but also plenty of gains on the curve as well. So let's see if the high torque from Hill T likes reverse as much as their mid torque does. Seven eighteen, that's seven thirty eight, seven twenty eight, and then seven eighteen. Ten foot pound spread between each model, but it was looking pretty healthy at the end there as well. Not teetering out yet. Pretty much matching the Milwaukee on the curve, which in our experience, yeah, that's not a bad thing. Our final testing series before we try larger batteries for all the tools is called BCS or best case scenario. Fifteen seconds, their best runs in their preferred direction. Here's the mid torques in Milwaukee, Ryobi, and the old generation Hilti. One last time. And here's the new Hilti Neuron. Four thirty-two, eventually outpacing the Ryobi P two six two, which is pretty erratic during a run and inconsistent in general, but well up on the twenty-two T previous gen it replaces and close to the Milwaukee. 
even if you sort of need to ignore the gains on the curve to see that. But that's not the model we've become most excited about. This is the battle we want to see. We're jumping right into all the high torques on screen. Let's see the Neuron take on Rigid and Milwaukee. Seven hundred and ninety, outpacing a Milwaukee twenty-seven sixty-seven, and matching the Rigid at least in peak torque. Both the Rigid and M eighteen were in their slightly preferred forward direction for these numbers too. That's bonkers considering the Rigid is even larger than both these others, eight point eight inches versus eight point one. Some spicy stuff. This is what we ultimately wanted to see. I mean, it completely failing would have been interesting to show as well, but for the price and red carpet they rolled out for these tools, we were hoping for something more than just middle of the road performance again. But let's head over to the rank chart, then we can strap some larger batteries onto these tools with some odd results there as well. Starting down here with the mid torque first, its power runs are turned into points as 27, 38, and 43. Really not a standout and forward, despite the previous gen being made for driving in construction anchors and such. It's 7.2 inches long, same as the Ryobi up here, and made decent power so gets decent points in the form of 60 of them. The last gen 332 foot pound Hilti was a bit undersold, but this one is being way underrated and gets max points here of 100%, but yeah, more like 442 foot pounds rather than 332. She's pricey, but closer to like 18 volt Makita pricey, not 40 volt Makita pricey and gets 22.8 points here, not great. That totals 290.8, placing it exactly where it is, which makes sense to us, certainly better than a Craftsman mid-torque. Makes P262 types of power for more money, but in our experience will probably last longer as well, and bring that power consistently, but a bit removed from these players up here. The model that does have a shot at disrupting a Milwaukee from our rank chart is their high torque. Its points are tallied as 56, 72, and 79. Impressive stuff. And at only 8.1 inches in length, that's going to make for some points. 97.5, one of the highest in cordless ever for us. All that from a tool that advertises 738 foot-pounds. Definitely some European modesty going on over there. Over here in the States, we rather like to see numbers in the thousands before we click add to cart, in my opinion. 100 points here. $334, yeah, that's not very cheap. On this chart though, not expensive either. 35.5 points, sort of middle of the road, not amazing compared to these over here. But that totals 440 points even, shooting this thing way up into fifth or only third among all of cordless, pushing down the also modestly rated Bosch Pro Factor that did though require an eight amp hour battery. Speaking of 8 amp hour batteries, our ranking is not done yet. We need to see what these things can do. First up is the mid torque. We're showing this one versus itself attached to a 4 amp hour pack because that's most interesting. Yep, 432 became 432. We did this a couple times as well. It's uncanny. Obviously some out the gate discharge rate gains, but was never really able to move the needle. We've never seen that before. Perhaps it's just 100% not made to utilize any extra amps, the brushless motor already getting everything it wants from a four amp hour pack. But that's not the case with the larger high torque, so let's see that. It's going up against the Milwaukee using a 12 amp hour battery, since it does slightly prefer that on average, and the Rigid with a 9 amp hour, their largest battery. Eight hundred and thirty four rigid, eight twenty four Hilti, and eight oh one Milwaukee, which means we can finally rank these on our average power rank chart 
that doesn't care about anything other than those beans. And I have a feeling some of you are going to rage quit after seeing these numbers, but here's the Milwaukee High Torque with an HD 12.0, and here's the Hilti. It scores 630 foot-pounds a second average across the run. That's right, one point ahead, which means on average across all the batteries shown today, roughly the Milwaukee and Hilti are on equal footing, one being cheaper and older, the other being shorter and newer. The mid-torque gets placed here with 350, also makes sense based on the curves you saw. So what did we see today? We saw very large, cumbersome batteries that fit together with the tool about as seamlessly as Russia and Ukraine right now. Lots of battery upload cloud data integration buzzword stuff that your boss's boss might love, but does very little for us in particular. But also performance, yeah, this is a huge step compared to their previous gen, enough one that I think they really are on the map, so to speak, in the conversation about who's putting out some of the top stuff just strictly performance-wise, even ignoring their massive warranty term or reputation for durability. Anytime those other brands out there are put on notice, it's a win for all of us as they are all pushed to make even bigger advancements. It's just a win-win. Appreciate you joining us for this one. A big thanks to Dave over at Mancaver Tools. Check him out with the link below for lots of other neuron tools and testing. Thanks as always for watching.